So for this fit, it's not much broken. Uh, what I want to do is modify a, I think it's a Mora, or a Mora knockoff, ice auger over to use an electric drill on it. The first thing I want to do is see if I can weld the handle because what I plan to do is cut it off at some point here and weld a, uh, a half inch piece of bar stock, round stock, into the end for the drill to bite on and then build a bit of a, a bushing and a handle affair. So it is magnetic. Now let's let me get my lid on. Just want to try putting a spot weld on it somewhere and see if it uh, if I'll be able to weld on it. Yeah, it looks weldable. I was worried it might be stainless, but I think it's just plated with something, sort of a chrome. Anyhow, I'll get started on this. So first step is I'm going to chew this off. So I need to root around and come up with a couple of chunks of pipe or rod. Let me do some digging and I'll be back. So the first thing I need to do is make a sort of a changeover half inch shaft that'll fix the drill or fit the drill and go from the drill to the uh, ice auger. I just took a six inch bolt, half inch bolt, and cut the threads off. So next, this is the threaded end. I need to fit this in here, but there's a little bit of slop. So I'm going to carve the head down using the grinder until it just fits in nice and snug. Sort of a poor man's lathe. Unfortunately this bolt doesn't look to be a hundred percent true. So we'll be working with that. Not quite. It's 
getting close. Need to take it back a little more on the down a little more on the back side. Say that's pretty close. So I'm going to attempt to take a little bit of the the wobble out of this. <laughs> Noise alert. Cover your ears. See if that's any better. Still a bit of a wobble. That's pretty straight. There's a bit of a gap there. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want the auger wobbling too much. That looks pretty good. Maybe one or two more right about that. That's pretty close. Now after I do some measuring I might cut this down a little bit. I want to drill opposing holes that will line up with the bottom. So once I figure out how much I want sticking out for the handle and then for the drill, uh, the drill itself, I'll drill the holes through so I can tack weld on each side and then weld up the top. To begin making the sort of the swivel bracket for the auger, I'm going to cut up some of this black pipe. It's a little sloppier than the half inch, but it's not going to be high speed, so this will serve sort of as the swivel for the handle. 
so that the drill stem can turn inside it. I could go looking for something that's a little tighter, but this is what I have. I think I'll make it about uh, two inches ought to be plenty. You won't have to worry about it binding or being too tight. So power in this is going to be one of these Milwaukee 18 volt 5 amp hour fuel. So, need that, that much there. That much for the swivel. So about that much can go into the into the pipe or the auger. I'm gonna want to drill a hole through there. <clears throat> and the idea of the a hole on each side is that once I have this in I'll weld it around the end here, but I also want to put two tack welds just to, I don't know, make it a little more stable and secure. Just take a punch here. First time I get to use my new toy. good for the pilots. And I'll get something substantial enough to that I can get a good tack weld.
Well, that'll give me enough to to get a good weld and weld in there. And that'll get welded on. This will swivel. And this will get welded on. And then I'll weld the handles off of here. And the, I want to devise a, a bit of a support frame. And then a trigger set up. So I'm not handling the drill when I'm augering ice holes. I'll be putting all the, the force and the lifting on the auger itself and the drill just stands to be there as the, uh, the power head. So I don't want to be lifting up on the drill and putting that extra stress on the armature. Okay, here goes the tack weld. Watch your eyes. Kind of did some beating and some banging. And I think I've got it running fairly true. It doesn't have to be perfect. But having it close will help. Just sort of spun it into the auger. Yeah, there's a little wobble to it, but nothing terrible. So I'm going to get some welds around here. Put the one washer on. Finish welding up those two plug welds. and see where to go next. Let that cool off a bit and then I'm going to clean it up in the wheel grinder or bench grinder. Tack this this one washer on nice and square, and it should be held square this way if the jaws of the device are square. To sort of make it square this way, I'll get a few tacks on. Watch your eyes.
let it cool off. And then start figuring out how to make the handle. Yeah, I still got the mark where the drill comes to. So be able to weld that in place and figure out some sort of handle affair. So the other day off camera, I didn't have it with me, uh, I did a little bit more work. These bushings that I picked up from Princess Auto for, I don't know, two or three bucks, didn't quite fit into this pipe that I'm going to use as for the handles on the, the ice auger. So by using this little knurly drill bit thing, I, I, on the end of a drill, I ran it around at high speed in circles. And then I cleaned it up a little bit with a little grindstone. And now, these bushings fit in relatively tight. And the idea will be They'll fit a lot tighter over the half inch sort of main drive drive shaft or whatever as opposed to before I was just going to use this pipe but it was pretty sloppy so that tightens it up quite a bit. Now the other thing I did or that I was looking at was this is a wee bit wobbly and I don't want that much wobble in it so I, I picked up a chunk of half inch rod so I got lots to play with I'm going to cut this where the end of the shaft goes to and I tack welded it earlier. I'm going to cut this off, refit the drill holes, refit the rod in, just make it a little longer, and try to get this this whole assembly a little truer. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off the old wobbly one. I think I'll cut the half inch there and drill a hole through about there. Then I can plug weld this one after. check is if there's any wobble in this hot rolled. Now it runs pretty true. Okay, let's try this again. little bigger bit so I probably should have made the shaft a little longer and drilled the hole down about there uh, having said that because what I'm planning to do is use this metal tape duct tape 
to, to sort of take up most of the slop and maybe help center this when I go to weld it. And I think what I'm going to do is put some wraps on. And I'll trim off the end where I'm going to plug weld it with a razor knife. But this may help. At least I'll try it. This might help to to center it and keep the wobble out. Just has to hold it long enough to get some tacks on it. And keep it true. A friend of mine offered me a free lathe, oh, maybe seven or eight years ago. I do wish I would have taken him up on it, because that would really help to do projects like this. See how this works and then I think I'll trim the end off it with a razor knife first off. Then maybe, maybe try tapping it in there. Level that down a little bit. Cut this excess off. I don't know how well this will show up, but I found a couple of half inch washers. And they appear to be 
sort of the right thickness to hold everything true as I turn it and tack it. So try keeping everything in plane or in trueness. We'll tack it on the top, maybe grind the, the nub off a bit, flip it over so I can get it trued this way. And then I'll plug weld the, the, the lower end. change that sequence a bit. Check that it's still true. Get one of the plug welds in to hold it. the glue from that metal tape or duct tape is is what's burning there That doesn't look too bad. It's going to have a little, little wobble to it, but not as bad as it was. So I'll clean up the, clean up the welds and noise alert. some sort of spot weld, but I think I'll run a little bit of weld around where the nut goes into it. Now I threaded the, the shaft back on just to protect the threads. I'm just going to put two or three tacks around this to, to make sure it holds in place. Yeah, one of 
one more should do it. Good, no chance of it breaking, breaking out now, I hope. So I think next we'll be finding a place to weld a washer. And set that in place. Weld a washer on the back part. That should spin, spin nice and true. I also picked up some of this one inch thin wall. It's a structural steel that I'm going to flatten out one end to weld onto there, cut it, and uh, then I'll have sort of a T-bar handle. I think next I'll start on the handle, this one inch structural pipe. Just going to cut about a foot off for one side and then cut the other one. This is going to be joined to the swivel point, so I think I'll flatten it out somewhat in the vise. A lot of times you can find the seam where this structural pipe was fused or welded, and I believe this is it here. So I'll try to put that in the center. I don't know if I can crush this in the vise or if I'll need a hammer. Vice is working. And yeah, that makes it pretty easy to weld. For the other ends, I cut up some, well, it's less than one eighth, but just a couple of little chunks out of some metal I had, and I'll, I'll weld around and then grind off the edges just to close in the end, make it look a little prettier. So, on one side of the handle, I'll just hold it, the other side, I want to put a sort of an upright bit of a T bar because that will be the trigger side for the drill. Let's say about four and a half inches, so three and a half off of twelve. Now I'll make the next piece about eight and a half inches. And again, try to find that the seam where it was welded and put that in the middle. If it's to the outside, there's a chance that it could actually crack and sort of open. So I have had that happen before. Yeah, that should work. Now for this bushing setup, I want to tack weld the 
the bushings into this collar. So I'm going to hold everything in place and in plane I've got it on that old chunk of half inch that I cut off earlier. I set my little buzz box on low, it's just got low and high. So I'll try it on low and see if that's hot enough to, to get a substantial tack on here. Seems to be good. Just tack it in two or three places. Yeah, that should hold that and everything together. Next I'll weld, uh, tack some of this on and then grind off the excess. It's pretty thin, thin stuff so Got to sort of spot welded. I'll go around and spot tack it all the way around and I can grind it up make it pretty just closes in the end clean it up with a flapper disc Yeah, that looks pretty good. On the other end, the shorter one, so you'll end up holding it here and here, and I'm going to put a, I think I might go with an upright, so you can grip it, and then I'll have the trigger here for operating the drill. Next, I think, is to tack those in place.
So I'm going to tack weld these washers top and bottom just to hold the, uh, the swivel and the handle in place. I'll tack them and then I'll take off the vice grips and weld them. Welded the vice grip to it a little bit. And once that cools off, it'll loosen up a little bit. So it's been two to three weeks since I've sort of played with this. Uh, I caught the bug over Christmas, so just recovered from that a day or so ago. Anyhow, I to sort of build the bracketry for the for the drill to sit in, I found a U-bolt that saddles quite nicely on the handle and then a chunk of a bracket from something so I've just been sort of off camera I did some figuring and I think if I, I sort of mocked it up so I'll make some marks where I'm going to tack weld this U-bolt onto this bracket <clears throat> And then I'll cut this, there's a little chunk sticking down here, I'm going to cut it off. I cleaned up some of the, the metal so it'll tack weld a little easier. Just make a mark where I want that saddle to sit. And I'll cut this off about there. Cut that piece off. I do believe I'll tack weld this U-bolt onto the upright and then I can clamp the upright onto the crossbar. So I've got that clamp so it's straight and in square to the eyeball anyway. So this is tight in the saddle. It's true this way. It's pretty true that way. That should be covered. 
Watch your eyes. There's one side, I'll get the other. Yeah, I'll let that cool down and then we'll see how everything fit. And for the, the drill trigger mechanism, this was an old handle off a lawnmower. It, that, it ran the cable for that brake affair. And I think it'll work quite nicely. I'm just going to cut it off right there and, and use this portion for the uh, to operate the trigger on the drill. Let's make a little noise here. Yeah, that should work well. Tack weld a rod down here. It's a nice tight fit, so there shouldn't be much play or slop. Come down with a rod and a pivot here. Tack weld that. Pivot it at the bottom with the pull trigger. And that should operate the uh, operate the drill trigger nicely. So I ended up shaving the head off the bolt and and sort of drifting it into the the uh, hole that I drilled in the end of this because I need this to sit flush against that support so I'm just gonna run a nice hot tack weld around the head. I'll let that cool off and then clean up the weld and then we can set it in place mark where I'm going to cut it off and tack weld this to the to that upright support for the trigger mechanism I found a nice thin quarter inch washer fit between I'll put a lock nut on this afterwards and and cut the threads down I just sort of want to mock it up and get an idea where the mat looks right about there. Well, I think that'll have it. Sure everything's seated. Seated there, tight. I'll tack that into place top and bottom, and then I can take the cutoff wheel and cut off the excess. I'll take the cutoff wheel and I'll spare you the noise. Cut that off and uh, figure out the rest of the trigger mechanism. Hey, this may or may not work. I need a 
a bit of a swivel at the bottom of the trigger mechanism. So I'm hoping I can tack weld a quarter inch nut to quarter inch rod without melting everything. It's pretty lightweight. Well, I'll give it a try. Well, so far so good, I think. Just flip it over here. I don't know if I welded the bolt in or not. Yeah, maybe a bit. Yeah, no, it's coming out. I'll try to thread it through from the other side just to keep spatter out of the... Yeah, it looks like I got a little bit of weld over. Clean that up. This bolt's a tad warm, so try threading it through from the other side. Well, may have to try this again. Okay, here goes the second attempt. A quarter inch nut's got so little metal that it doesn't take much to sort of blow it all out. That's my excuse anyway. Try and get a little on this side and then the top and bottom. Well, it's not looking terrible. Yeah, and the bolt still wants to move, so that's a good sign. I can't get a little tack on the top. Just a nice gentle one. Well, I'd say that's about red hot. Here's the other vice grips. What thread right through? Yes, it will. It looks like I got some pretty good weld on there. Now I can cut this off at the right length and weld the bolt on the end of the other piece. When I thread it together, that'll that'll make the swivel for the trigger trigger mechanism. I think I'm going to want the bar about that height. So I'll cut this right about there. So here's going to be the swivel affair and it's 
I'll just cut the, the bolt off. It threads into this welded on nut. So that'll create the swivel. Tack weld it to the, the control arm. I put a slight bend in it to go around the armature. And I think I'll bend it straight up here because there's going to be a T-bar on the end. T-handle. So I'll bend it straight up, cut it off maybe inch, inch and a quarter and that'll be the trigger to operate the, uh, the drill. Just go for a nice and keep it at a right angle to everything. Yeah, it should work. Yeah, okay, well I'll cut this off and then I'll make an eyelet to tack weld on here to hold this this end in place and I can tack up that end and see how it works. So I managed to find a little tab with a pre-drilled 5 16 hole. I just cut it off and rounded it to fit the uh, the handle. It comes over to the swivel and goes up to the the trigger mechanism. So I think everything is sort of mocked up in place. So I'm going to tack weld it and see how everything works. Well, I think that should work pretty good. So I flattened out this end of the pipe and I had made this little closed in the ends of this handle off camera. Well, my battery's getting low and I've got some other things i got to go get done. But I'll just try a little test run. I think that'll work. So I'm going to add a little added stability is maybe the way to put it. Uh, given that the drill puts out somewhere between 100 and 120 pounds of foot pounds of torque, uh, I think it's 1200 inch pounds so that would be 100 pounds give or take. I'm a little worried that if there's any added stress it might split where the threads are because this is designed to crank by hand. I took a chunk of slightly larger pipe here and split it with my 
my cutoff wheel and sort of kept hammering it until it fit relatively tight. So I'm just going to tack weld it in various spots just to give a little extra wall thickness to where the thread goes in. Just going to go around and put little tacks rather than one solid weld. And the other thing I want to do is uh, I'm just going to tighten this in. That should do it. And I don't know how well this will show up, <clears throat> but I've got a a nut that was part of a wing nut handle. So I cut off the sides of it and then drilled out and trimmed up another piece for the bolt. So I'm going to weld this up roughly in this position and the 5 16 bolt will act as a lock mechanism so this can't sort of spin freely and fall down the hole if that were to happen. It won't throw anything out of balance because this thing doesn't spin that fast. So for the last little widget, I just cut up a, a chunk of strapping I found, drilled out the holes. That should hold everything in place. Temperature's up to about plus 10 or 12 in here, so I'm going to use the good old trim clad aluminum. Seems to set the quickest and lasts a pretty long time compared to other trim clad paints I've used. I'm not going to get overly fancy with it because I don't think the fish will really care. Anyhow, I'll carry on with the painting and then bring you back once it's done. Show you the final product. Okay, so I'm just going to test it out on some frozen snow and ice. And... Well, I think it'll work. So I did a little test cutting on some ice I found outside my buddy's uh, driveway and it, it seemed to work fairly well but there's no pivot or center point on these uh, moras so it, it tends to sort of walk a little bit. I don't know if that's due to these not being in the exact right place or whatever but I think what I'm going to do is I've got this half inch hole bit 
for going through wood and I don't think I've ever used it. So that's about say three quarters of an inch to the points of the blades. So then I'm going to center punch and drill this plate out and tap it for a 3 8 coarse bolt and then cut off the whole bit and weld it to the top just so it so maybe that much protrudes past here to sort of help give an anchor center point. To begin with I'm just going to loosen off these Allen head bolts and then get them out of the way. I'm going to try to get this centered as much as possible. It's like about an inch and an eighth, so it should be nine sixteenths. And that's about three quarters of an inch. Drill a pilot hole. Just check that center again. Nine sixteenths and nine sixteenths. I think that's about quarter inch, maybe five sixteenths thick. Calls for a 5 sixteenths drill bit in order to tap a 3 eighths coarse hole. So 5 sixteenths, here we go. I managed to sort of wedge the auger into the vise without tightening it too much. So hopefully it won't spin. Like that. I don't want to bend any of the flights by tightening it too much, so... Ah, there we go. Well, I spared you the noise of nipping that off with the, the cutoff wheel. I'm just going to try to get it high bolt to center, good tack on it. Well, that didn't work. Maybe this stuff's a little too brittle. So I'll have to go to plan B and grind that off. So plan B, I cut the end off about a 
3/8 drill bit. I got a box of oddball bits. Just going to try welding that on. Eyeball it to center. That one didn't work either. Okay, hopefully third time's charm. I trimmed up another chunk of the drill bit and sharpened the end a little. Maybe we'll take my time spot welding it so it doesn't get so hot. Now I'll let that cool down a bit because it's red hot and then I'll get some tack welds on the opposite sides. That should do it. I'll put the blades back on and hopefully nothing interferes. That should help as a bit of a pivot point. The other alteration I'm going to make to it is previously I was using this plate and a couple of wing nuts. If it's minus 15 and I drop one of those wing nuts it's going to be a bit of a pain. So I think what I'm going to do is weld Tack weld this little plate underneath at an angle, sort of to fit the contour of the handle, and then use a, uh, a strap with a little clasp. It'll just be easier to handle out in the cold. Just give myself a bit of an angle to sort of go against. I can always bang it into place afterwards. I'll try it about that angle. Get a tack on it. Let that cool down a bit and make sure the drill fits at the right angle and uh, then I'll weld it from the bottom. That's cooled off enough. So this, in theory, that's the right angle. And the idea will be to just tighten it up like that. That might be a little better in cold weather. See how it works anyway. I'll just flip this over and give it a tack, tack on the bottom. should do it. I'm going to try a little test on the ice auger today. I, it's about minus 20 Celsius out so I don't know what that is Fahrenheit but it's cold. I froze a bucket of water over the last couple days good and solid and uh, ratchet strapped it to the side of the tool bench so hopefully it won't spin. A little too cold to get out ice fishing, but I want to make sure that this will cut before I go.
well it's not really performing the way I wanted it to so I think I'm going to try I did sharpen up these these blades the other day but I'm going to try putting the shims underneath so they tilt down a little bit more Just loosen off the the Allen head. Now the shims are they're pretty thin, but it shouldn't take much to change the angle. Set that one in. It is shaving the ice, but it's not really cutting at the rate that I think it should. Here's the second one, just clean out any snow or ice. Got the shim set in, I'll button it back up. Okay, let's try this again. Still not cutting it. I'm going to work the edges of these a little bit more. I mean, I did already, and they feel pretty sharp, but just to be sure. That feels really sharp now. And there's no lip. Keeping the bottom of the blade flat because this is the 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 ice side and the upper is the auger side. So I'm keeping it in parallel or flat with the stone and just lightly working it.
that feels good and sharp so I'll install them and try cutting again. Hey, okay, so I sharpened the blades. I don't know if it'll show up here, but I installed shims. I made some out of some aluminum I had. Because these guys, they're about the same thickness. Hopefully the aluminum's a little thicker. Uh, but these guys kept sort of falling out and were hard to find. So I thought, well, I'll make up a few extras in case I need them. So I'm just going to set things up and try try another ice bucket test. Well, I also took the center pivot out. As this wasn't designed with it, I thought, you know, maybe that was somehow hindering the cutting process. Uh, I don't know, we'll see. I'll get you set up in a stand and we'll fire it up. Here goes another attempt, hopefully the final one. We'll see how this cuts. Feels like a mite. Well, it is cutting, but it's it's quite off center. I don't think it's cutting as good as it should, because that only went in, well, maybe a couple inches. My old auger would have been through two feet of ice in that time, my gas auger. And this seemed to bounce back and forth, so I'm thinking one of these blades is Maybe it sharpened a little different than the other one. Profile or the angles off. Hey, so just for grins and giggles, I cut a couple more double wide shims out of this aluminum. And then in the vise, bent it over and hammered it flat so it's twice the thickness now. I think that might have done it. I did run a little test, a little test drill here a minute ago. So I'll just show you how quickly it goes down now. That's the stuff. And I think lastly, I'll shut this off for a minute. I'm going to dry all this out, get rid of all the snow and ice, and apply a little bit of the medium, medium strength thread locker loosen these off and and uh, thread lock them into place because in years past I have I have had the uh, Ellen bolts or screws come loose a bit and I've lost these blades down hole so yeah just something you might want to try if you're running into that yourself okay